Welcome to Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church of Deerfield Beach, Florida. I'm David Potter, pastor here. It's good to have you with us in person and online on this third Sunday of Easter. If you wish to, you can download the bulletin on our webpage and follow along. Those of you present here can follow along easily on the, on the PowerPoints on the screen. Thank you also, those of you who are present for following the CDC guidelines, the masks, the physical distancing, all those good things. We greatly appreciate it, even as uh, more and more of us are getting the shot. So uh, things, things should be getting better and we should be able to return to a, a better normal, hopefully. So glad that you can be with us and glad that you're safe. Please join me in the opening litany. Please stand as you're able. Do not be afraid. Jesus is risen. This is the name of the Lord has made. When Christ broke the bonds of death and hell, and rose victorious from the grave, how wonderful and beyond our knowing he is our mercy and love and kindness to us, that to redeem a slave, he made us God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen.
Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him the, this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading responsibly Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Travel then, do not snatch it. Seek to your heart in silence upon your breath. Offer the appointed sacrifices, and put your trust in the Lord. Many are standing, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. Our second reading is 1 John chapter 3, verses 1-7. through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in Him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there was no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? 
And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. May your word be my word, and may the thoughts and meditation of our minds and hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Matt Skinner, who is a New Testament professor at Luther Seminary, has done extensive study and extensive writing about the book of Acts. It's kind of his specialty. And he says that the theological emphasis, that is the understanding of God that is lifted up on display in Acts, aim to help you trust. That's the aim of what is emphasized in the book of Acts. Notice that choice of word. It's an interesting choice of word. And I, in my experience with Mr. Skinner, with Pastor Skinner, with Professor Skinner, I've never known him to casually choose a word, especially when he's doing something that is meant to edify. So he says trust. There's a difference. There's a difference between belief and trust. You can believe something has happened, and you can trust in something. I apologize if I've used this analogy before, uh, but there, the story of the, the man walking across Niagara Falls on a tightrope with a wheelbarrow. He was walking across the wheelbarrow, with the wheelbarrow, pushed it all the way across, turned around, came all the way back. He had a huge crowd there, everyone went, yay! He said, do you think I can do it again? Yeah! Who wants to get in the wheelbarrow? <laughs> the difference between believing and trusting. Huge. It's that trust in a God. To trust Jesus. To trust the entire holy promise that's been made and that has been kept. Skinner notes that when people stand up and address audiences in Acts, like Peter does here in Acts chapter 3, they urge them to begin a journey that resembles the road that the earliest Christ followers followed. Embrace Jesus and align yourself with his movement. For he brings and enacts the salvation that God provides to humanity. Tell others, pay attention to what happens next. Consult the scriptures so you don't forget about all the wild promises that God is fulfilling. Remain open to the Spirit and trust God to reveal to you, that means us, more and more ways in which God is enlarging your, our understanding of the alternate society that God is creating. And never forget that all of that is founded in Jesus. He goes on to say, Acts tells believers that they are part of an ongoing quest to discover, to steward, and to share the good news that through Jesus Christ, God has changed the world and has made a pledge about the future. 
And this quest begins in trust. Theology, some understanding of God, is what you discover as a result of that trust. In today's reading of Acts, it begins in the middle of the story. And it helps, at least it helped me to rewind a little bit to better understand what was happening. So, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 3 of Acts, we read, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a man, lame from birth, was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. A side note, he wasn't allowed to enter the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. And Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And while he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. And that's where this first, today's first reading begins. But first, consider this man. We don't know his age, but we do, do know that he has not been able to walk from the day he was born. He knows no other way of being, being dependent on those around him, having to beg since he had no other way to earn a living. And now, that's been turned upside down, inside out. The man had only imagined what it would be like to walk like other people. He certainly didn't expect it to be able to. And now, now he was jumping and leaping around like a little kid, exuberant, giddy, beside himself, clinging to Peter and John as they preached to the crowd who had gathered. Peter and John were quick to point out that it was Jesus who had healed the man and not any power of their own. Jesus, who, was, who had died, who had risen on the third day, who had appeared to many of his disciples and close followers, who had ascended into heaven, that Jesus was still healing, still proclaiming the good news through the people who followed him. Luke, who wrote both Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel, according to Luke, says today, then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He opened the disciples' minds to the scriptures. First, we have to open our Bibles. Then our minds can be opened. And there's a difference between just reading it and reading it with an expectation that my mind will be open and Undoubtedly, like me, there have been times where your mind has not only been open, but blown. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. That forgiveness of sins are the sins against God and the reconciliation to God. Those people who feel, I've done too much, I've turned away from God, I've abandoned God too much, that God would never take me back, need to know that that's not true. 
They need to know that they can return, that Jesus has paid the cost, and that there is nothing that needs to separate them from God. Peter echoes that in our reading from Acts. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Repent meaning renounce your priest easter ignorance is what he said to them renounce your pre-easter ignorance and open your mind to the reality that god has vindicated jesus embrace the truth that more is to come skinner says it so well he says we live in a time that calls for repentance even better we live in a time in which repentance is possible Repentance is a much larger notion than moral contrition or a commitment to live differently. It is to adopt a whole new outlook. It's to be brought to the realization that a seeking Savior is coming to deliver you. Not even death can stop him from coming to deliver you. The man who is healed prior to the sermon knows that. He knows what it is to be brought into a totally changed world. And it is time for us, for you and for me, to know what it's like to be brought into a totally changed world. Trusting the one who is changing it and changing us, changing you. And to that, may all God's people say, Amen. Amen.
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures, so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders and people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feeling God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Especially we lift up to you Susie, Tammy, Karen, Mike, Liz, Lee, Jeff, Brandon, Katie, Debbie, Todd, Marco, Robert, David, and those we name silently in our hearts. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community of Zion. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together, so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. We pray this also for our sister congregations of St. Philip of Mount Dora and all saints of Orlando. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now, see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share that peace with one another. You may be seated. At this time, we reflect on that amazing Easter gift that God gives us in giving us His Son and giving us reconciliation. And as we are blessed with whatever we are given, He invites us to bless others as well.
table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is time to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
you to join us for Monday morning 9:59, a time to let our souls catch up with us. Wednesday evening is the study of the book 12 Tiny Things at 6:30 p.m. and that is on Facebook Live as is 9:59. You do not have to have read the book, although if, of course if you do read the book you will get more and be able to participate more in the discussion, but there's plenty to discuss even if you aren't doing the readings alongside it. 
And on Wednesdays, the book study is followed by prayer at the end of the day at 8 o'clock. It's my privilege to invite you, uh, those of you who are members of this congregation, to a special congregation meeting Sunday, April 25th at 12.15 here in the sanctuary, either in person or via Zoom. We'll be looking at Zion's past, present, and future. The meeting is limited to two members only, as I said. Together we're going to look at the viability of Zion and seek God's guidance. The Zoom information is on a letter that's been sent out, and you can also find it on our website. The Class Tech Fundamentals will meet on Thursday, May 6th at 3 o'clock here in the sanctuary and on Zoom, and it will be about working with photos and backing up to the cloud. So another mystery that may be solved in the process. Confirmation students, you get the wondrous task of meeting with me after worship from 12.15 to 2 o'clock in KD Luther Chapel, and there will be conf no confirmation class next Sunday due to the congregation meeting. Our life verse for this week is from the Psalm, Psalm 4, verse 8. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. So I encourage you to use that as a verse to meditate on over the course of this week as you go through your day, as you rise, and as you go to bed in the evening. Thank you, as always, for your generosity in, in sharing what you have with us that we may share it with others. A good part of that goes towards sharing the good news through things like our, our online web activities. And so thank you very much for that. You can always click on the, the Give button on the website, or, or as many of you do, leave your offering here in the offering plates. With that being said, I invite you to stand for our blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your grieving into dancing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.